Good morning, folks. We've got an unreal lineup of news today, from weather to an earthquake to science news on solar terrestrial interactions and out into deep space. Let's go to spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star once again without sunspots, without solar flares, just the large dark coronal holes, and the plasma filaments which seem content to cartwheel around the limbs instead of heading to earth-facing position with eruptive intentions. Recall that the coronal holes are blasting out much stronger and faster solar wind, and this catches up to slower solar wind out ahead of it, bunching it up like snow on a shovel blade. That's what we see this morning in the solar wind telemetry. Bump in the orange density up top is the bunching, and the ramp up in purple, middle panel, that's the speedy stream from the coronal hole, but speedy only relative to the previous stream. We're still below 500 kilometers per second, and so while it's up off the floor, KP index still shows all green in Earth's magnetic state. Another large earthquake rumbled deep in Indonesia yesterday. Despite hitting the low velocity zone of the mantle, this one was felt in northern Australia. Up next is the weather. Strong cyclonic system doing more spinning in place than progressing eastward here. And while the major lightning returns we showed yesterday died down throughout the day and there were merely sparse returns except for the convergence line towards the Gulf, the storms that did pop up in the Midwest were no joke. Up to 12 tornadoes dropped in Illinois yesterday causing considerable damage to local buildings. Unfortunately, these began around late afternoon and kept up until after sunset, so the cleanup had to begin as the sky fell dark and the colder temperatures crept in. Let's go to outer space. We're focused on getting down into the swirling clouds around active galactic nuclei. While the swirling action is part of every single model of these systems, it has never been directly seen until now. Using multiple observations, the gravity mission has shown that this swirling action of gas clouds is indeed what forms the heart of a quasar, those powerhouse systems that blast out powerful emissions. And when those emissions are released, we tend to see a donut-type feature wrapped around the middle. The donut and the cosmic jet are now seen to be much more of a single circuit than before, and astrophysics books are going to have to be rewritten. It turns out that the interplay between the donut and the jets turns the scenario into a fountain-type situation. Infalling cold gas, blasting out, recycling. It's a fountain making a donut. Let's come back to Earth because we've got new solar climate forcing papers out of both Korea and where Europe meets the Middle East. Korea's study used frost and cold marks. Caspian Sea used height levels in the water body, both with ties to long-term solar and geomagnetic cycles. In the electroquake realm, we've got more on the ELF disruption of Schumann resonance before and after Grecian earthquakes. It is, of course, the before part that is more important and can help forecast these electric events. Learn more on that entire topic at quakewatch.net. Up next, we're going to Saturn, where we are once again seeing plasma action taking responsibility for something that has been blamed on kinetic dynamics and gravity. Plasma Z-mode waves can produce powerful electron belts of Saturn, opening the door to new methods of interpreting the electromagnetic environments of planets like these, especially with large rings and sub-Jupiter-sized radiative power. We're going next to Kansas State University, finding decades of data turned into a visualization of groundwater shortages, gains, losses, and the ENSO phases in play during those times. Patterns based on those phases clearly emerge. Stay awake here, folks, because we have the top China solar science team forecasting cycle 25 both as having it begin in about two years, which would make it another crazy long sunspot minimum, but also for a non-dud sunspot maximum when it does finally arrive. In fact, slightly stronger than this last cycle. Recall that while all data suggests a grand minimum is coming this century, actually none of the data suggests it is here or will begin this next sunspot cycle. Magnetic power still showing something left in the tank. I want to get out ahead of this next topic, and it's going to run through the net this week. Did they find gold on Mars? Is this shiny meteorite what they think it could be? I promise you this, they're going to find gold, diamonds, oil, and 10,000 virgins up there if it will get them funding to send up another craft. Call me cynical if you want. I call it being suspicious. Last but not least, top story today is something we saw out of Russia in the 80s, out of Europe in the 90s, and now welcome to the West. Solar activity at birth has effects throughout your entire lifetime, manifesting most strongly once reproductive age is reached, and it's not a small difference. Average from highest to lowest solar activity is eight years of life expectancy. Again, that's average. When were you born? 
website members. We had a great fly on the wall podcast yesterday. I'll be posting the December planetary geometry later today in the deeper look section as well. We've got your wind maps followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now it's 425 AM in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.